is the Royal Westminster Regiment. It's a Canadian Armed Forces Reserve Infantry Unit located in New Westminster, BC. You might know it from the picture, Wait For Me Daddy, of a young boy running after his father who's going off to war in World War II. This is the Royal Westminster Regiment Museum. It contains artifacts from World War I, World War II, Korea, Afghanistan, peacekeeping missions, and other missions that the regiment has participated in. It has a collection of firearms, artifacts, uniforms, memorabilia, flags, and much more. One of the artifacts is this. This nondescript khaki uniform belonged to a woman who served in World War II. This uniform is a uniform of the Canadian Women's Army Corps, which was a military unit throughout Canada where women served to do their part for the war effort. Hello everyone and welcome back to So Biased. I am Melissa and I am gonna be taking an in-depth look at this uniform. Now, full disclosure, I am a member of the Canadian Armed Forces Reserve. That being said, absolutely nothing I say is speaking on behalf of the Canadian Armed Forces, the Royal Westminster Regiment, the Government of Canada, its subsidiaries, or anyone else. My opinions are entirely my own, and I speak only as a private citizen, not as a member of the Armed Forces, and do not represent them in any way whatsoever. The Canadian Women's Army Corps was founded in 1941 as a response to the increasing demands of World War II. There were Women's Army Corps throughout the world, including in the UK. Interestingly, the Women's Army Corps in the UK had the then Princess Elizabeth serving. She was a vehicle mechanic. And there are plenty of photos of her in her uniform serving in World War II. The Canadian Women's Army Corps was fairly unique in that prior to 1939, women were only allowed to serve in combat in capacity as nurses or other healthcare workers. However, when the Second World War broke out, women wanted to be part of it. They wanted to do their part for king and country at the time. And there was all sorts of unofficial women's auxiliary units that were formed up at the time. And so in 1941, the government formed the Canadian Women's Army Corps, as well as a Naval and Air Force Corps. The Canadian Women's Army Corps, also known as the CWAX, interestingly, was the only one that allowed women who were not white to serve in them. For all those of you who do not think Canada has a racist history, Think again, the Navy and the Air Force specifically that they were recruiting women only of, and I quote, the white race. Gross. So the Canadian Women's Army Corps took Canadian women of all races and backgrounds. And in my research, I was able to find all sorts of pictures in museums, in family histories, and all sorts of places online of women of color, of all sorts of backgrounds serving including this one of a woman called Mary Grey Eyes. She was an indigenous woman. Mary Grey Eyes was Cree, and she decided to join the Canadian Women's Army Corps, which was fairly unusual at the time, considering all of the restrictions that were placed on indigenous people in Canada and the restriction on their freedom to move, vote, and basically participate in any form of society. However, when she joined, the Canadian government decided to use this as an opportunity for a recruiting poster, and so they they sent off this photo saying that her father, who was the chief, was blessing her on her way to go off to war. This is completely not true, and the man who is wearing this regalia, it is not his regalia, he is not related to her in any way, and he just happened to be an indigenous man sitting on a base in Ontario when they took this photo. Interestingly, when the war ended and Mary Grey Eyes got out, she was offered the opportunity to vote for the first time. Because Indigenous people were not fully allowed to vote until 1962, gross, the federal government offered her the opportunity to vote in the upcoming federal election and use it as an opportunity to take photos of her in exchange for her giving up all of her treaty rights. They offered the same thing to all Indigenous veterans who'd served in World War II. Mary Grey Eyes was not so fond of that. Her response was, are you going to give the right to my mother or my sister or the rest of my family or my community? says, no, I'm not gonna take it, and she walked away. This uniform that I found is an extant original from a woman who served with the Royal Westminster Regiment. I had the opportunity to go into the museum and take a deep dive into the uniform and what it looks like, as well as pull a pattern off of it because I'm going to make one for myself. Now, in looking at this uniform, you can see it is very small. I took the measurements on it, and the person who owned this had a 26-inch waist, a 31-inch bust, 
and was approximately five foot two. This project is a huge labor of love for me as a military member and as a woman who's had to fight very hard to get equality and who has faced a lot of systematic discrimination. It was very important to me to honor the women who came before me and I would really love to have one of these uniforms. So along with this pro the launch of this project, I am also launching my Kofi. The link is in my description below. I am taking donations to fund this project. I found the fabric manufacturer in the UK that made the original fabric for World War II uniforms and I found a place that makes the shoes. I found a place that sells the buttons and the cap badges and everything else and I want to make it this absolutely as pristine as I possibly can. I'm also going to be releasing the pattern once I'm done. I will have to do a lot of pattern grading so I will have a lot of steps along the way. I can't guarantee I will be able to release every single pattern size, but I will be able to release probably from about a size zero, because I think that's what this woman was, to about a size 16, and I may be able to go bigger after that. So if you are willing to make a $20 coffee donation, I will send you a copy of the pattern size of your choice once it's released for free. So if you want to help and see this project come together, any donation you can make is greatly appreciated and the link is in the description below. But now let's take a look at the uniform in depth. So this jacket was made for a very tiny person. And you can see some of the details here of the woman's face on the collar dogs, which are these pins here on either side of the collar. And then the same detail is on the buttons. And there's only one breast pocket, which is unusual. Most uniform jackets have two. We have a really beautiful liner here. It's definitely not a silk. I'm not entirely certain what it is, but I can take a peek and you can see it is very delicately hand sewn into the bottom. And then I believe bag lined elsewhere. Oh no, it's hand sewn in the cuffs. I think as well, it's just starting to come loose here a little bit, but you can see those tiny little hand stitches. Um, we have an inside pocket, which is quite small, and then a very small, I assume this would be like a pen pocket or something, no? No, it's probably a watch pocket. Um, it is a worsted wool on the outside and really beautifully pieced with these extra pieces in here. This I think is just a dart. It stops right after the pocket and yeah it's duplicated on this side. So you have these lower level pockets which oh god they're decorative. Oh my god. You have never never have an end to decorative pockets. Yeah both sides are decorative. So we have the two front bodice pieces left and right. So center front side front times two and the sleeves are also in two pieces so you can see here there's are the seams across the bottom of the sleeve which go all the way up to the armpit the collar has this interesting facing on it i'm not sure what that is it feels like a wool and it's sewn on to obviously provide some kind of reinforcement for the collar. We have the original stitching as well as some big ugly replacement stitches or repair stitches to try to put all this stuff back together because I imagine the sleeve lining was always coming out but it looks nicely felled here at the top see it again here looks like it was hand filled in and then it kept coming out and was repaired more than once oh oh that's interesting so there's a cotton batting in the shoulders if you look at the sleeves you can see this the lining is pulling apart just slightly so we have the sleeve layer and then that cotton batting so this is really interesting. This is something, these sleeves are super overbuilt. So you can see this cotton batting layer and then the fabric times two. And then there's what I think 
is a twill tape layer in there. And then this canvas is like a really thick, almost burlap. You can even see the weave here. Another layer of what I think is that cotton batting or some kind of batting. And then there's another twill tape, I think of some kind here. And then the lining layer. But that's, God, that's a lot of fabric. And it is definitely machine stitched, but you can see the occasional hand stitching just to keep these in place. But that is a lot of layers, holy smokes. So the buttonholes are the keyhole style and they're obviously machine done really tight still after this, this many years. The buttons are sewn on with that kind of look, that really light colored, almost white or off-white cotton thread. Um, which I see elsewhere and it could be that this person sewed them on themselves, which would explain f some of the other stitching, but you can see The same or a similar white thread used to fix the lining here So it may be that this person just did their own repairs the military makes you label everything And so this also belonged to the same sergeant Hartley. This is her service number at the top and at the bottom It says I think it's RCASC and that's Royal Canadian Army Service Corps. Um, their trade would have been, whatever this is, this denotes a trade badge, but I'm not familiar with all the World War II trade badges, so I'll have to look it up, but I will post it below. Um, but this is really beautifully constructed. Like you can see here, all of these, all this top stitching, these double lines of top stitching around the seams of the skirt, which is just so overdone. Like you just don't see that in uniforms today and one thing I love is someone kind of screwed up the zipper a little bit and had to skirt around it and so there's just this little mistake in the tailoring. Two panels in the back, two panels in the side and two panels in the front and with some darts and shaping as well as look at this, this is so cute. Look at this little pocket. I assume this is like a watch pocket or something because it's too small like this is as, as deep as it goes but it's adorable and oh my god look at that too little mistake in the commercial manufacturing they just skipped over that which also love okay so it looks like there was a tag here but it's gone that probably had sizing and such in it but it's not here anymore so there's no top stitching around the center panel but there is around both sides here and there is at the top and bottom of the belt piece and then same thing back here there's no top stitching around the center that's that little moth hole but there is top stitching around both side panels as well and then some around the little placket to cover up the zipper so when it's closed the zipper would be closed up and then a little I think this is like a protoplastic button, like a celluloid button, because it doesn't look like wood or anything natural. I think it's like a celluloid, which is a early form of plastic that they had around in like the 30s, 40s, and 50s. So that would make sense. Very deep hem, um, and then this satin finishing around, and then it's all top stitched by hand. Sorry, it's all whip stitched by hand around the hem, and it's blind hemmed I think it doesn't look like a blind hem but it's just whip stitched and their stitches are very tiny but very occasionally they peek through so you can see the occasional little whip stitch from where they where they hemmed it and all of the edges are surged which I also didn't expect because again government manufacturer it's usually not this well made so they're all pressed open they're all pressed really flat and they're all surged in addition to this top stitching on for the panels. So that's really pretty. All right, and then the inside of the belt, it appears that the belt is just a single piece folded over because you can see the fold here. And then again, surged into place and it's two pieces with a join in the center. So center front is, it would line up with the center front seam and and then an extra 
placket here for the zipper. And same thing, a little folded. Oh no, that's not an extra piece. It's just folded right over at the end for the zipper, which is machine stitched in place. And both of these sides are overlocked as well. And then you can see there's some shaping. There's um, a dart in the back, but only on the one side. And then the same thing in the front. There's the dart, but only on the right-hand side and not on the left. The left has this little pocket. Um, I'm sorry, it's still adorable. I just can't. And then that's just sewn in as an extra kind of little added on piece here. Um, just sewn right into the belt buckle, or sorry, sewn right into the belt piece. And then they did the little kind of pseudo welt pocket thing here. And then they just did this stitching on the edges to keep it in place. It's, it's weird though to have two darts only on one side of the skirt. I've never seen that before. It's kind of an unusual construction style. It had give you kind of an asymmetric shape, but it must have worked. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six buttons on the shirt, and then two on the pockets, which are actual functional pockets. Um, it appears, I don't know if this person did it themselves, but uh, that, but I don't, oh no, it is actually. There's a little pen pocket on the inside of the breast pocket, which I think is super cute. Um, I'm not sure if it's original just because the thread isn't quite the same color and you can see some kind of ugly stitching on the inside so it looks like someone's sewing machine was skipping <laughs> i have had that happen way too many times almost all of the seams have these kind of denim seams so these double seams where it's kind of folded over and then sewn on again so top stitched twice and so you see that on the side seams all the way around the arms the seam on the arm center as well and because it's a military uniform we have the epaulets again with the buttons and this is something i love that you don't see a lot of is this is to roll your sleeves up so if you're doing a lot of heavy work you can roll your sleeves up and then just use the buttonhole or sometimes does this have it there is this little tab with a little buttonhole and so when you want to roll up your sleeves you'll just roll up the cuff you know three or four times and then you can use the little tab to put on to the button and that will hold your sleeves up if you're doing heavy work or dirty work or whatever else or if it's just a really hot day so that is actually sewn in yeah so the little tab is sewn in right here under the button so yeah that's the inside of the sleeve someone sewed this little thing it's kind of cheap but <laughs> just folded it under top stitch it right on and then it works perfectly well to hold your sleeves up. So the collar is also top stitched, fairly simple construction. It feels like there's some something in there, something like a like an interfacing because it definitely feels thicker than this. It feels like there's something in the collar. So I think there's interfacing there. I don't think there's interfacing in the yoke and I don't think there's any in the pockets because this would be worn under your jacket anyway so it wouldn't really be seen but it would make sense that they would do it for the collar and I think possibly for the cuffs too it feels a little thicker here but we do actually have some gathering at the bottom of the cuffs which is cute actually on the shirt itself we have this front placket which appears to be yeah a separate piece sewn in here and for the hemming we have a very simple rolled hem <laughs> that is a little ugly I love this I love that it's not perfect and they go to the trouble of lifting up the sides so you get this kind of neat little tailoring thing and they add check this out these little pockets in between I guess so that your side you know it won't show your side if your shirt rides up too high but the shirt itself is I'm pretty sure this is cotton it feels like cotton yoke piece now this is doubled up you can see here how it's obviously folded under and then made the collar which is two-piece collar it appears yeah and I think they added extra stiffening on the collar stand as well as on the collar. 
and then the epaulets, which are not interfaced, I don't believe, but are nicely top stitched around. And this is also fairly standard. You sew them into the sides and fold them over. So that's just how epaulets are normally done. Just throw them into the shoulder seams. Um, but there is um, another interesting detail here is on the sleeves. So these sleeves have the facing here, which ends in a nice point and is all top stitched. A little bit of wear, but not much. This thing is in remarkably great shape. Somebody really cared for this guy. Um, or it's their last uniform before retirement. And they didn't have to wear it that much. So we have the facing on both sides of the sleeve slit here and double cuff. So that one's folded over. Or I guess it's not. No, it looks like it's stitched together here. So it's a two piece cuff stitched together and top stitched. Um, this one, these guys have the simple buttonholes. They don't seem to have the keyhole buttonholes like the jacket does. Yeah, attached pockets. Seams don't perfectly line up, which I love. It makes me feel less terrible as a seamstress. All right, so this was made in 1951 by, looks like Prince, a size seven, or I guess a medium. This would not fit me because I have a gigantic head. Uh, so we have this leather strap in here, but I don't know if this is real leather. It feels very flimsy. Um, and it has obviously pulled away from the brim. I assume it was supposed to sit right there, but it has somewhat pulled away. Uh, it has the same lining or very similar lining to the jacket. Um, so it has the lining here. It's the same wool as the jacket and the skirt and it has this kind of unusual shape in the back. So these two pieces are sewn together or they're a single piece and they're flapped under and they're, or they're folded under. And these flaps just kind of go up the sides here. And oh my goodness, <gasps> is that an original hat pin? I am pretty sure. Oh my God, that is, I'm almost certain an original hat pin from the wearer. <gasps> That's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna put that right back where that was. But that is, and so we have the Canadian Women's Army Corps badge with the three maple leaves in the front and the leather, or I think it's fake leather, brim here. Well, not brim, but this facing piece here, which is folded over and these buttons. And so we have, yeah, the leather there, and then all of this is the wool. I think it's being held together by the pins, but it is a very stiff hat. So the, the brim is extremely stiffened, and so is this piece here. This has some stiffening in it, and so does the inside, but this piece does not, this folded under bit. It has the satin lining, which is starting to come away a little bit, but still in remarkably good shape for its age, and all stitched together really beautifully. That is the CWAC hat, and that is it for the CWAC uniform. So that's the uniform. I hope you were as intrigued as I was to see this. I love seeing all the tiny little details in this. And in my research, I found out what so many of those layers were around the shoulders, and they're a huge part of tailoring and suit tailoring in particular. Obviously, this is gonna be a multi-part series. I have the pattern already in the size two, so the next thing I'm gonna be doing is making a mock-up in the current size and adjusting from there to make sure that where I'm starting is right, and then I'm gonna start grading up and making some more mock-ups as it gets bigger. And with each video, I hope to present more of the history of the Canadian Women's Army Corps, the CWACs in general, and individual women who served, particularly these women of color who may never have had their stories told. So this video is part of the Costume Symposium. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've been tuning into all of the other amazing content makers who are making things throughout this weekend. Mm -hmm. I will link to all the Costume Symposium stuff on the bottom. I hope you're participating. For those of you who are participating in badge collecting, get your phones ready to take a picture of the QR code for the badge for this panel. I will also leave a link in the description below if you want to click on the link to get the badge for 
it's a women's war. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked today's video, please like and subscribe. Please leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Any interaction with the video helps the algorithm. I would love to hear what you guys think. Everyone in the comment section has been so lovely and I can't wait to hear from you all. But that's it for today. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope to see you soon. And until then, stay happy and safe. Take care of each other and see you soon. Bye. For those of you who part for those of you who are no, I can't. As a woman who has had to fart fart. Fart very hard to get equality. <laughs> exactly, right?